that's when I need the Xamarin Test Cloud license? Yeah, no, you could run the test locally on the simulator with no license. Okay. Uh, so you could just download the Xamarin.UI test from NuGet, and then once you want to run on a physical device locally, or if you want to push to Test Cloud, then that's when you're going to need the license. All right. So. So now with that, let's just get right in and let's create some tests for our Heritage Properties app. So I'm going to swap over to Visual Studio. And you'll notice here I have some, some uh, the NuGet package manager up. I've already installed uh, NUnit, so we are using NUnit, so if you're familiar with NUnit, you can use that. And I've already installed Xamarin.UI test uh, version six, uh, 0 0.65. And this, you know, here it said, uh, here it says, you know, you can run on simulators and has a time limit of 15 minutes for a single test unit. So that's your limitation with no API key. So we're going to close that. And I've set up a test, a UI test.cs and a project. This is just a basic uh, class library that I've used. And I've added those new get packages. And I'm just going to go through the setting up. So if you're familiar with NUnit, you know you're going to have a test fixture, you're going to set up your test fixture, and here we're going to set up our paths to the IPA, which is the uh, the file, your app file for iOS, and our APK, which is the app file for Android. Uh, we also have a global variable called app, and this is how we're going to uh, run the actual test, you know, so we could do user interactions such as tap and anything like that. Uh, we have a test fixture setup. Here we could see if in the test environment, if it's, uh, if it's in test cloud, then we want to set our path to the APK and IPA to string.empty. Else, if it's local, we want to set our, our current files to iOS, bin, iPhone simulator, debug, heritage properties, or on Android, we want bin release heritage properties dot APK. Then we want to set up every time a test is going to run, we want to run this setup. And we want to say, uh, if it's in test cloud for iOS, configure app for iOS. So we need to configure our app, uh, our app object right here, configure it for Android. And if we're running locally, we want to configure right here uh, with our API key. Uh, so configure app, Android, API key, path to APK, send the API key so we can run on a physical device, and we want to start the app. So that will go out, and it'll start the app. And here you'll notice I've already pre-built the test. So we test, uh, you know, built it, ran it, it passed, but it's actually not doing anything. So how do we figure out what is in the application? So what you're going to use is something called, we're going to call app.repl. We're going to save that, and we're going to run this test. So it's going to run, it's going to sign it, it's going to say, it's, it's going to deploy it to the device, here you see there's our Heritage Properties app. It's going to run. And we're going to get this command line popping up. So this command line is where we're going to figure out what is actually on the screen. So right here, we're going to do app.query. And you, see, you notice how we have IntelliSense uh, somewhat here. So it tells us what, uh, what methods are available. So we're going to run app.query, and we're going to hit Enter. It comes back with a whole bunch of information uh, on what is available on the screen. So when you first run your test, you're going to have to go in and you're going to have to probably, you're going to have to look through these and you're going to have to find, for example, here is our map view. So we have our map view. It gives us, uh, you know, if there's a label or a text, this is the class name. It is enabled. So all this information is there available. So what we want to do for our tests, if we remember back in here, we want to tap on the toolbar. We want to find the list view. And if the list view is not available, uh, we want to assert and we want the test to fail. So we're going to go back. And I'm going to do query or app.query. I'm going to set a function, c.className. And I'm going to go like that. And I'm going to call find all the classes that are action menu item view. So that action at menu item view is this button right up here. So then if we do that, we can actually go back in here and we could say tap. And you, if you watch the screen, 
it's going to tap and it's going to go in and it's going to see the list view. Then we could do again app.query and we could say uh, c c.class equals list view. And there we have a list view, so we get one result. So we know that's there. You could also go in and you could find by text. So if you want to go in c.text and say we want to find one of these IDs, ID underscore 00006. So it finds the item. And then if you wanted to, you could go in and tap on the item. And then it automatically goes into the thing. And then app dot back to hit the back button. And then we go back. So we got we got all these uh, all these things uh, up and running. We found our elements that we need to. Now we need to get it back into Visual Studio. So if you're back in the command console, you do an app dot copy. Actually, not app dot copy, just copy. So the history is copied to the clipboard. I'm going to exit. We're going to go back into Visual Studio, or test pass. We didn't really do anything. And I'm going to paste. So here we have our app query. I'm just going to go like this. I'm going to delete this one because we don't need that. I'm going to go like that because that is our name. I'm going to comment this one out. And app.tap, and then we want to make sure we don't need the query, we just need to tap there. And then we want to make sure app.query c.class equals list view. And we want to make sure something is there. So var list is equal to that, and we want to assert um, if it's true, we want to, for the condition, we want to make sure that's true. App not available. So there's our, our first test. So we could go again and we could run it. To run the test. I'm going to bring this up. It's going to shut down the previous uh, instance. It's going to run it. It's going to switch from map to list. And then you're going to see our test actually passed right here. And you can see it in Test Explorer also. You can see that the test passed and it'll list all our, all our tests in there. Okay, so what you've done here is you took the app.repl and you use that to go in and interactively work with your running app, kind of find the steps that you w were uh, doing to, to build out your test, and then you did the copy to copy those steps to the clipboard, and then you pasted those into your test to run, have as the automated steps. And some of them you, you needed and some of them you didn't, so you were able to modify that, but it was a good way to see that interaction and kind of essentially record a test along the way. Exactly, exactly. And that's exactly what you want to do now. Of course, we're, we're, we created a cross-platform app. Um, we want our tests to be cross-platform also. So our classes, action menu item view, list view, those are not available in, in iOS. So we need to go in and we need to create a cross-platform test. So we have some projects or some files already available in here. So I'm just going to include them in our project, and I'm going to go through them. So what we're going to have is we're going to have an interface called iScreen Queries. So these are the functions that we're going to call to find our map view, our list view, our navigation button, and our web view. So some of the tests are going to be make sure the list is available, make sure we could switch from map view to list view back to map view, and make sure when we, we could scroll the list view, click on the list view, go to the details page, make sure there's a web view, and make sure we could go back to the list view. So a little bit more interaction within the application, but all the classes within iOS and Android are different. 
So we need to set up these functions, and this is our, our interface. Uh, so now in Android, we have our Android implementation. So here's our function, map view. So we're saying uh, for this function, uh, return the class with map view as the class name. List view is the class name for list view. Uh, we have a navigation, pro uh, navigation button property, and for Android, it's called action menu item view. And web view is actually called web view. Now for iOS, it's completely different. So we have MK map view for map view, UI table view for list view, uh, UI navigation button for navigation button, a little bit closer, and UI web view for web view. So those are the platform specific uh, functions that we're going to call when we're running our tests, depending on which platform we're running on, on UI tests from here. So now that we have that set up, we need to add a, a method in here or a member variable in here. Oop, wrong one. Called ice cream queries. Now with ice cream queries, we're going to instantiate that in our setup. So I'm going to replace setup with something else. This right here. So you notice here, if we're on test cloud, we want to set up uh, uh, for test cloud for iOS. We want to set up screen queries for iOS, test cloud for Android, screen screen queries for Android, and if we're local, uh, we want to do this right here for iOS. Oops. Um, but we need to comment these out because we can only run one at a time. Uh, we can only run either Android or iOS. And here's our queries for Android. So we set that, create a new object and set it in our member variable. Now in here, we're going to go in and replace our tests. Uh, some tests that have a little bit more functionality. And I'm just going to collapse these and just go through them. So here we're doing the same thing. We're acting. We're saying, let's tap, and let's make sure that there is a list view available. So you notice how we're using the queries.navigation button. That's going to call the platform-specific um, uh, function so we could get the class. Again, test map for map view, or test for map view. So we're going to tap. We're going to wait for uh, 100 milliseconds. Uh, we're going to tap the navigation button again, wait for 100 milliseconds, and we're going to wait for a map view element. So now this wait for map view element is part of your uh, IAP. But this wait for right here is actually a custom extension method created here. So we wanted to, to wait for 100 milliseconds, but there wasn't a method for that. So we just created one. And this will uh, you know, just do a while loop, and it'll wait. And you can wait for 100 milliseconds. You don't want to set it for longer, because we're not, doing, uh, we're not giving the CPU a chance to do anything. Uh, so 100 milliseconds is not going not gonna to kill it. And then we're going to assert to make sure the map view is actually there. And then hopefully the test will pass. Uh, test details from list view. Uh, so this we're going to go into make sure the details page is shown. Uh, so here we're going to tap, go into the, the, the list view. We're going to scroll up. We're going to tap the list view. We're going to make sure the web view is, is shown. So then that way we know we're in the, the details page. And then we're going to go back, so app.back. And then we're going to make sure we're back in the list view page. So we could go in here, and I could you know, build this UI test. You know, go into Test Explorer, and I'm going to run all the new tests that we have available. OK, so that queries interface gave me the ability to commonly name my controls across the different platforms so that that is abstracted from the, the tests and then the, each of the tests, I can run those. I can just change the platform when the time comes. Exactly, exactly. So here you see if uh, you know, we look at the tests. The tests are running. Uh, this one is, let's see which one it's doing. That one was just checking for the list view to make sure it's available. And this one should be switching from map view to list view back to map view. And our test finished successfully. I'm going to run the details view just so you could have a look at that. So it's going to run in here. It's going to show the map view. It's going to switch to the list view. It's going to scroll. 
It's going to tap, and it's going to be done. And we finished executing, and the test ran successfully. All right. So now that that's running, I'm going to switch over to my Mac, and I'm going to show you the tests from iOS. So I'm going to run these. Uh, it's the same code. Uh, but instead, I have iOS. So iOS tests, you can only run from iOS. Um, so let me get rid of that. And let's say run unit tests. And so now this is, this is still connecting to your local device. We're not using a simulator, right? Yeah, this is on the local device. So it's going to run. And right now, directory not found. So it's actually because I don't have the IPA file built. So I'm going to go just change this to there. I'm going to make sure IPA is built in debug. I'm going to rebuild this. And while this rebuilds, I'm going to show you how we call 